Hey guys, today part 2 of my perfect long range build, the AOS Falcon 7. Last time we didn't have all the hardware, so we couldn't assemble the frame. Now also the electronics arrived. We have the motors, ESC, flight controller, all 3D printed parts, everything basically we need to finish the build. Let's roll the intro and dive right in. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the frame assembly of the AOS Falcon 7. All 3D printed parts arrived and I ordered them from quite far away from the Netherlands. They're industrial grade printed 3D parts and I wanted to go for a bit higher quality than the usual home printed parts we usually use. It is a long range build and I want to have more reliability. Also, it should look a bit nicer and that is why I went for that. Here we are looking at the 3D printed tray where the Crossfire Diversity Receiver will live. I'm going here for Crossfire Diversity because of the two antenna systems that I have redundancy in case there is a fail of one antenna system. Then we have the bumpers and the front nose mount for the camera, which is almost a structural part of the frame and having better 3D printed quality for that is really helping to reduce vibrations in the camera feed and overall improves the build quality of the entire frame and system. The GoPro Hero 8 mount we are looking at here, I will most likely not use. I have recently really bad quite frustrating experience with GoPros, with lost footage and corrupted files, even I'm very aware of the problem if the GoPro feed is not stopped correctly that this is uh, a common problem. So I always turn it off in a way that the files shouldn't be corrupted. However, it always happens and that's quite frustrating. Therefore I'm shifting to the DJI Action 2, which is uh, from the software integration and reliability spot on, I never had a problem. And besides that it's a way lighter, has a much better uh, drag coefficient and therefore on a long range build produces for the entire system more efficiency, more long range capability and uh, longer flight times. So why did I choose the AOS Falcon 7 as a base for my long range build? Long story short, I have great experience with Chris Rosa's design and CNC Madness out of Canada to cut really high quality carbon frames uh, from my AOS 5.5 build. That is a really great quad and since Chris Rosa recently analyzed the Falcon Red FPV frame, enhanced it and gave us the AOS Falcon 7. I just thought it's a no-brainer when I want to go for a long-range build to choose exactly this frame. Right out of the bags, same like for the AOS 5.5 I was building prior, the carbon of the frame makes a very good impression. Wherever carbon can be saved, where there are no heavy loads in terms of stress on the frame, it is thinner carbon, but where the resonance characteristics needs to be improved and the rear braces, the carbon is really heavy and thick so that the overall performance of the vibrations of the frame is uh, maxed out as much as this is possible for such a huge 7 inch build. I also think it's really great that the bottom plate is split into two. That gives the ability for soldering the wires of the engines to the opposite sides of the ESCs, giving it an overall cleaner look, but also a more reliable soldering and wiring system. And especially going for a long range build where it's most likely impossible or at least very difficult to retrieve the quad in case something goes south. That is a very important thing to also keep in mind when building a long range quad. 
the frame itself is also very simple. It is not over complicated and the structure and design itself is kept as simple as it possibly can be to get the most out of it. There is no additional drilling of holes compromising the structure. It is really all very well thought through. Also the hardware is kept to a minimum giving an overall clean and solid build which indicates reliability overall since less screws can get loose and shaking around. So. It makes a good impression. If all this actually turns out to be right and true, we will see uh, during the test flights and when I go for first long ranges. But, well, at least we are starting on a good foot here, <laughs> but uh, hopefully it will turn out to be fine because there's a lot of energy, hours and headaches going into thinking how to build it and it's also not really cheap so it will be a big waste if uh, a build uh, which we are thinking up is not turning out to be as we wished for and especially just building the AOS 5.5 having a very great experience and a super nice flying quad on my hands my expectations that the AOS Falcon 7 is also flying great is quite high and it will be disappointing if it is not however I think there are no many risks taken here. The motors are great from FEB Cycle, they're really proven to be very good and thought through in design and as well the frame. The ESCs are very very solid as well as the flight controller I'm choosing from iFlight and basically designed and enhanced by uh, JB's uh, thoughts. So I'm using the FC from JB. Uh, I don't really see uh, a lot of things which could go wrong, so we will see how everything turns out to be in the end. Just in case it helps you during your build, I really think it's important to not tighten up the screws too much and let everything move a bit around and doing the tighten of screws at the end of the build when everything is soldered onto the ESCs and the electronics mounted so that there are no unnecessary gaps and stress on the frame uh, at the end of the build. Then when the frame is all together and built then applying some torque not even too much in the end to tighten up all the screws so that the frame is really rigid it but um, again I would really do that at the end we can see here how I'm fighting to even just get the simple standoff screws in the frame because some screws are already too tight and for that I have to loosen them up a bit and move the arms a bit around that all you can save you a lot of headache if from the very beginning you don't screw it in too much Finally all standoffs are in and now the top plate from the AOS Falcon 7 frame can live on top and can be screwed on so that we can get a first impression how the frame appears and how the rigidity is and how much space we have for all the electronics to mount inside. How the wiring, GPS and antenna system can be wired and what would be the best solution for that. The rear braces are a bit tricky to assemble but it's a very efficient thing to just put the long screws for the rear standoffs through the braces enhancing the rigidity and then transferring all stress which might occur to the entire structure of the frame and not just focusing on one point so that the stress overall is distributed evenly over the entire build.
and here our frame is mostly assembled without the 3D printed parts yet. So one main 3D printed part will live on the front at the nose of the aircraft mounting the DJI FPV system, the camera and also one crossfire antenna. The second crossfire antenna will live on the rear left arm and the diversity receiver will be housed by the 3D printed part living at the rear bottom plate. The GoPro mount really snugly fits right above the DJI camera, uh, but as already discussed, I'm shifting a bit away from GoPro right now and will use the mount for the DJI Action 2. The splitted bottom plates basically function as a cable channel for mounting the right engine side to the left side of the ESCs and vice versa, reducing risk for interferences of electronic components overall, but at least giving it a better, cleaner cabling job. Again, down here under this uh, 3D printed part will live the Crossfire Diversity Receiver with two antenna outputs which also will go inside the cable channels between the two bottom plates. And here we are coming to the end of part 2 of my perfect long range build, the AOS Falcon 7. The frame is assembled and the next step will be the electronics before we then do the maiden flight. So the electronics will be the JBF7 flight controller, it will be an Acon ESC. Then we have the FPV cycle, 30mm motors with 1000, oh wait, let me check on how much KV they really have. Just a second. Yes, they're really that low. They are 1150 kVs. So there are two kV versions of the 30 millimeter motors and I chose the lower kV variant for the long range build because of efficiency. Another 30 millimeter 7 inch build is on the horizon where I will use the higher kV version. And as always, thanks for watching this today a little bit longer video. Spread the news, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with friends and family, maybe somebody in your circles, they have interest in what we are talking about here. Happy holidays, have a great Christmas time and see you very soon in the next video.